the only way to get your ticket to this VIP tournament is to have celebrated in the winner's circle. This year, a new format, expanding the field to past Tournament of Champion winners, PBA Hall of Famers, and the past 39 champions on the Denny's PBA Tour. Whose side will Lady Luck be on today? The 2008 H&R Block Tournament of Champions starts now. City has witnessed more PBA action through the years than Las Vegas, and the action is in Vegas. Sin City hosts the 74th PBA event, and it is a sinfully sweet field of finalists we have for you today. The number four seed, the Hall of Famer, Pete Weber, looking to win his record-setting ninth major. This is Ryan Schaefer's ninth top five finish at a major. Number two seed, Chris Barnes, won this event two years. in the very same season. Glad you're with us today alongside 13-time titleist and Tournament of Champions contender this week, Randy Peterson. I'm Rob Stone. Glad you're with us. This is the second of the four majors in the PBA this season, and match number one pits two guys kind of on opposite ends of the elation ladder when it comes to a major. You have three seed Ryan Schaefer, three times a bridesmaid at a major, taking on the legend, Mr. Pete Weber, looking for his ninth major title, a win today that would eclipse the record held by Earl Anthony. And Pete loves the majors and that's obvious and it was real evident this week when match play started Pete really elevated his game in the 32nd game of this tournament the last game position round he took on Mike Machuga he stepped up to the plate shot 247 and grabbed the number four seed by one pin over Parker Bone the third the last time he won this tournament Rob back in 1987 Riviera Lanes in Akron Ohio Pete looking to win for the second time in the Tournament of Champions. Today's number two seed, Chris Barnes, has struggled mightily on television as of late. 0 for 7 in his last televised appearances. But, Randy, he always seems to kind of bring his A game when the paychecks are at their fattest. You're right. You know, and, and his struggles are well chronicled on television. He, he has a hard time winning. Last week, he was the number one seed, lost to Mike Scroggins. But there's one thing I do know. With big money on the line, Chris Barnes mans up. He knows how to win the big money tournaments. Remember, this is his third consecutive TSC telecast. And Michael Haugen Jr., in his first Tournament of Champions appearance, is our number one seed today. Michael Haugen's really turned his game around this season. Last year, you know, he was trying to be more versatile, trying to hook it when he had to. Going straight is his strength. He said, this season, guys, I'm doing what I do best. Straighter is greater for Michael Haugen Jr. That's why he captured his first career title earlier in the season, and that's why he's your number one seed today. Oh, A win today will earn the victor 24 points in the Player of the Year rankings. It will not be enough to eclipse Walter Ray Williams Jr., but it would move Haugen and Barnes into second place on the Denny's Player of the Year points list. And Pete Weber will bat lead off here in match yeah, number one. Shots again. Won in Las Vegas 23 years ago, the 1985 Showboat Invitational. Damn it. And he slipped. <laughs> that might have been a lane violation. Yeah, I think he fouled. That was good. I fouled. My Tripped right over. Get my feet mixed up, huh? He actually tripped in between fourth and fifth step as that slide step was going through. He got hung up on his right foot. Unbelievable. And goes Brooklyn to cover himself. <laughs> a harbinger of things to come, perhaps. I'll tell you what, with as good a motion and, and, and as great a physical game as Pete has, the last thing you would think is him tripping over his own feet. And this town is known for its good footwork. <laughs> There's Ryan Schaefer, your three seed. Four tour titles, zero majors. Yeah. 
already has two titles in Las Vegas, does Schaefer. He won the 2000 and the 2001 Orleans Casino Open. You're following, I'm sick, I'm gonna throw up. There's a look at how they got here in our matchup. Weber, one of many who rolled a 300 this week, including my partner, Randy Peterson. That's right. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I can't remember the last time I had that much fun. Game three, I shoot 300, 805 to start the tournament. I'm leading, somebody pinch me. Boy, did they ever. Randy, we'd like to introduce you to match play. <sighs> Drop and give me 10 for Schaefer. This is his fourth consecutive top 10 finish. Up now again is Pete Weber. We saw him stumble on his first effort. He was telling us yesterday, Randy, he has never been as nervous for a TV show as he was prior to last week in a tournament named after his father. He is left of that head pin again. Pete doesn't look real comfortable for whatever reason. And, you know, this week, I, I thought this was one of the best jobs the, the lane maintenance, maintenance committee have done with the oil pattern all year. And, and the reason why I say that is because I feel that every game had a chance to play this week. Left-handed, right-handed, straight, hook, didn't matter. Multiple angles. That's why you see different styles. You're going to see different okay, styles. Okay, shots over with now. You on the show today. Can loosen up now. But Pete does not look comfortable. 21 year gap between his first major, which was the 1987 Firestone Tournament of Champions, and a potential one today. Take a look at the players with the most career majors. There you see the late great Earl Anthony, Pete Weber with eight, followed by Walter Ray and the great Mike Alby. Two southpaws, two righties. Here's Weber, rather Schaefer, here in the third. As back to back strikes, looking for a turkey. Ryan Schaefer, lots of experience in major championship competition. Right here, he's going to go just a little bit light. But today, unfortunately for Ryan, he has flu-like symptoms. Said he was nauseous before going on air. Right now, just trying to keep it together. Has the two pin standing. Hit by the flu bug on Thursday, really set in on Friday. Curves in it got worse Saturday during our interviews with him. He was fighting the chills. His body doesn't want to eat anything, and that's not good when you're a diabetic. Hard to keep that blood sugar where it's supposed to be. He's been fighting diabetes for 22 years, has an insulin pump. His keys, he said, I just want to show up and not pass out. Way to set those standards nice and high. <laughs> strike, strike, spare so far for Schaefer. the pocket that time the guys that hooked the ball a lot this week they could move in and they could play that inside line and play that little rainbow shot start it around third fourth arrow and loop it out to about the eighth board the guys that wanted to go straighter could michael haugen jr later today you will see him firing it straight up the first arrow weber down 11. that was a better shot Pete looks like he's just a little fast, like he's getting the ball into the swing a little early. He looks like he's a little rushed. He's to take a deep breath, relax, and get back into rhythm. Takes care of the four pin. All right. See those almost trademark-like sunglasses for Pete Weber. Started slapping them on when a lighting technician refused to adjust the lights at an event, so he put on the sunglasses, worked out just fine, and he's kept them ever since. I thought I threw that one pretty good. What 
I saw this week, Rob, was if you could go a little bit straighter early on, it was better because as the lanes broke down, as the oil pattern started to wear out a bit, it was much better playing in then. There wasn't enough friction to the right part of the lane early on, so straighter was a little bit better early on. As the day progressed, as more games were bold, as the lane started to dry up, that's when the players started to migrate towards the middle part of the lane and really open up the entire right side of the lane surface. Three strikes for Schaefer in his first four frames. Here he is, starting number five for him. Schaefer 0-1 on television this season, lost to Tommy Jones in Reno. Jones would actually go on to win that tournament. And we look back at the season's first major, the USBC Masters in Milwaukee. Schaefer finished 133rd. Quite a turnaround this week. It's been a long drought for Ryan. He hasn't won in 88 events. He's posted five runner-up finishes in that span, including two last season. Right now, right now, Rob, looking real solid. Three strikes in a row for Schaefer. When we come back, we'll find out if he's got a hand bone in his pocket. Up 32 is Ryan Schaefer. Match number one concludes when we return. The H&R Block Tournament of Champions is brought to you by H&R Block. When you got... Welcome back to Red Rock Lanes and the 2008 H&R Block Tournament of Champions. Expanded field this year of 54 bowlers, including my partner, Randy Peterson. And Randy the Dandy, Eye Candy Randy, whatever you want to call him, tore it up. Finishing 10th, averaging 228.5, including a 300 in round one of qualifying. And even had a little fan by your side cheering for you the other day. Buddy, I'll tell you what, what a fantastic week for me. And it felt great to get out there with the guys, the superstars of yesteryear, the stars of today. And I'll tell you what meant more to me than anything was the players that came up to me and congratulated me on a great week. Guys like Wes Malott, Parker Bone the third, Patrick Allen, Mike Scroggins. It was just a tremendous week. Take a look at the bottom side of the top 10. Parker Bone just missing on rolling today. And there's Robert Smith, Danny Wiseman, Mike Scroggins. But we're back to bowling. And this is Pete Weber, down 32. This is his first crack in the sixth frame, working on a spare. That was the pocket he's been searching for. Careful, I got one. He's got to be good with his speed, How about two? and he's got to get it far enough to the right. That's what's going to get the ball to recover from the right part of the lane. He needs to start stringing some X's together because Ryan Schaefer has five strikes in six frames. Two in a row. Watch out. Here comes PDW. You know, last week he said he was extremely nervous after the first five frames. He finally caught his breath and was able to bowl a pretty good match, making the 4-9 in the 10th frame. Scroggins struck out in the 10th to uh, win that match, but looks like Pete settled down a bit. But right now, Ryan Schaefer, red hot, working on four in a row, your favorite. The ham bone. Leaves the 10. Don't look so dejected. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm upset for our fans. I see all the ham bone signs littering the crowd here. They want to raise them. This is a real good shot by Schaefer. Watch the six pin, second to the right. We call that the ringing 10, where it goes up and around. What causes that, sometimes a little extra ball speed. Sometimes when you get it in the oil a bit, the ball comes in at a too sharp of an angle. Takes care of the second single pin spare opportunity he's had in this match. If you're Pete Weber, that's what you like to see from your opponent. You need, he needs to get back into the match and ringing tens from your opponent's 
a, a good thing if you're trying to catch back up. The lead now down to 21 for Schaefer, our three seed. on the head pin well just a pinch high you're right Rob but he, he catches a real bad break and leaving the 4-9 split you know normally here you, you look for a trip four if anything and unfortunately pays the price same thing that Weber left last week we saw Pete make it by getting the ball over here to the left side of the four pin sliding it over into the nine this will be a huge shot for both competitors Hasn't hit a split all week. Schaefer up 19. Kicks it, not enough. Open frame, opening now for Pete Weber. Well, let's see if Pete Weber can take advantage of it. Working on a double. He can take the lead in the eighth frame with a strike right here. Never got the ball far enough right. I think that's I like going the ball. Watch this. Looks like a pretty good shot out of his hand, but just left of target. That ball will not hold line. 3 7 10 is what he's staring at now. Look at the 3 6 10, and he takes care of it. Just refused, don't you? Had the opportunity. Well, Robbie still has life. I mean, he can strike out ninth and 10th frame, 224. Ryan Schaefer going at a 215 pace. There you go. Sets up the 10th frame, that's huge. Ryan Schaefer can strike out and shoot 235, so. Here's our atonic edge taking a look at the form of Ryan Schaefer. And Ryan said that he turned everything around back in Reno a couple of weeks ago because Mike Jow Jazz now worked with his push away of rounding it off. And that's what sets up his timing and sets up him getting to the foul line. A little unique style, straight legged at the foul line, but it's okay. He's not a six foot five player. He doesn't need to get that low to the foul line. Schaefer 5'8, 155 from Horseheads, New York. Watch his push away. That's the key. He's got to round it off. Looks good to me. Yeah, I think so. Strike nine spare. Schaefer will shoot 224. Pete Weber would need all three in the tenth to tie. A double here, Schaefer will move on. Uh, Schaefer took a lot of time lining up that shot. <laughs> Schaefer has not caught a break this entire match. The only shot he's missed the pocket was in the third frame where he went light and left a two pin. Followed up with ring and 10, four nine strikes, stone nine. Zero breaks for Ryan Schaefer. A spare here and a strike, he'll shoot 215. Pete Weber can double in the 10th to win. The count here is important. He needs to get at least nine to force Weber to double. If you remember last week in Fountain Valley, 
It was Weber who had put the pressure to Mike Scroggins, forcing a double from Scroggins. And Scroggins converted, ended up moving on to win from his number five seed spot. So a 215 for Schaefer. Pete Weber needing a double here in the 10th frame, and he's only struck once okay. on this there right lane the entire match. Got it. One down, one to go. Trust is a must or your game is a bust. The late, great Billy Whaley used to say that. Pete Weber trusted that shot. He got it to the right with the right amount of speed, right amount of hand. And that ball was dead flush. One more just like it. He moves on. dare you 10 pin well it's a great shot but you know what the All same right, thing man. happened to Ryan oh, Schaefer wasn't like that's an uncommon lead this week either All right, man. good luck good luck so Schaefer three times the bridesmaid at a major will move on Here's Weber's effort in the tent. Well, he liked it off his hand. Ring and 10, big time. 2.15 to 2.13. The flu-ridden Ryan Schaefer moves on to the final of the Tournament of Champions. When our live coverage returns, we'll get sentimental with some of the game's greats and hear from our number one we welcome you back to Red Rock Lanes in Las Vegas, Nevada, where the three-seed Ryan Schaefer has just moved on. He'll take on the two-seed Chris Barnes in the semifinals of the h &R Block Tournament of Champions. Here's the results of last week's Motel 6. Text to vote question. What bowler would you like to see competing in the 2008 Motel 6 Roll to Riches? And defending champ Doug Kent winning in a landslide, tallying 58% of the votes. And Randy Peterson standing by with this week's number one seed, Michael Haugen Jr. Randy? Thanks, Rob. Uh, Michael Haugen Jr. captured his first career title just a couple of months ago and now finds himself as the number one seed here at the Tournament of Champions. But, Michael, there was some question as to whether or not you would be able to compete in this event. Tell us what happened. Well, basically, on Wednesday, I woke up, and I had a very, very swollen, sore throat. Um, the, the tonsil was actually sitting on my tongue, and if I tried to speak, I was gagging, so I couldn't talk. So it was actually good, you know, because people don't want to hear me talk anyway, right? <laughs> so it was pretty good. But um, anyway, you know, I just went to the doctor, and he was like, well, you know, take a couple days off and rest. And I was like, dude, this is tournament champions. You know, there's no way. And he's like, well, good luck, you know. And so I wanted to take the paper and show him, look, dude, I'm top seed, you know, but...
we welcome you back to ESPN's continuing live coverage of the H&R Block Tournament of Champions. Coming your way from Red Rock Casino Resort and Spa, the Red Rock Lanes, and our thanks to that man, Dennis Matthews, the bowling operations manager here at Red Rock Lanes. Dennis Matthews, a personal friend of mine. What a wonderful man. Always going out of his way to accommodate the pros this week. He's a great, great guy, and what a great job he's done all week. As we take a look at our updated bracket, the three seed Ryan Schaefer defeating Pete Weber, 215 to 213. So now he takes on Chris Barnes. Again, Barnes 0 for 5 on television this season. But it'll be Schaefer who begins this semifinal match for us. be a good pocket hit. Huh. A little light, though, on your side. Yeah, and that's all right, because he only leaves the two pin. This week was just a great event. The fans all week long were tremendous. A lot of active and retired military. This week, I had the wonderful opportunity to go to the largest military tournament in the United States and actually met Brigadier General Thomas from Nellis Air Force Base here in Las Vegas and shook hands with 500 active retired servicemen and women. It was just tremendous. A lot of them here this week to root on the guys. I ran into some military folks that actually knew Sean Rash when he lived in Alaska growing up as a kid. Here's Chris Barnes. This is sixth televised appearance, which equals his total from last season. Shrapnel can't take down the 10. Chris Barnes, a high rev rate player, throwing 16 pound bowling ball, and generally speaking, a lot of power when his ball hits the pins. Just a little bit more angle, that 10 pin goes for a ride. Barnes won this event two years ago, the 2006 Dexter Tournament of Champions. That was held at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut as we look at our matchup right now. Big money Chris Barnes. He won a couple of Motel 6 World of Riches for a couple hundred thousand apiece. Tournament of Champions, U.S. Open for a hundred grand. He knows how to bowl in the big, big money events. Looking for his third major title. And Rob, remember at the start of the show, I talked about multiple angles, why I thought this oil pattern was so well thought out for this week. Remember, we see Ryan Schaefer playing a little more of that rainbow shot. Pete Weber did the same. But in direct contrast, look at the way Chris Barnes is playing the lanes. Nice and straight right up around the second arrow.
Whoa. Look out. Big hook. Could have been a lot worse. Absolutely. Could have been the eight and the ten pin with that two pin, and that would have spelled disaster. For the second time this match, he's left the two pin standing. When you hear oops at the bottom of the swing, it's generally not a good thing. You can see that flying right elbow just missed the release point at the bottom of the swing. Again, if you're just tuning in, Ryan Schaefer battling flu-like symptoms. Did not let us shake his hand yesterday, and I appreciated that. <laughs> so does my wife and three kids. By the way, we're here at the beautiful Red Rock Hotel and Spa. And was it you that I that I saw downstairs getting a pedicure yesterday? It must not have been. <laughs> okay, well, I was, however, like you. in the sauna steam area, sweating off <clears throat> some water from my system. Beautiful facility here. It is really nice. If I have any say, I'd like to come back here uh, maybe next week or the week after that as would, well. Wouldn't hurt my feelings any. Done. No whoops on that toss. Right. Now here comes Barnes. If three strikes in a row is a turkey, four strikes in a row has become a ham bone, much to the delight or chagrin of many PBA fans out there. We're looking for our first ham bone of this tournament of champions. Chris Barnes is on the ham bone clock. Go ahead, take it away. Brady, let the dog inside. I got a ham bone for him. <laughs> Chris Barnes looking for a five-bagger, and it, it, is, it is five baggers still. You know, we had uh, some uh, comments the other night about people requesting what a five-bagger should be, and, and by no means is it my desire to name every combination of strikes, but someone recommended the Cinco Sacco. That is the only time I'm going to mention Cinco Sacco, because it's not making the cut. Oh. Real good shot there. Chris Barnes leaving a ring of 10. We saw a lot of ring and 10 pins this week. Wasn't terribly difficult to get to the pocket, but it was trying to figure out the right angle to carry all 10 pins. This looks really good. He likes it. He was looking to take a big lead. Instead, big time ring and 10. Two more wins, and Barnes becomes Hall of Fame eligible with 10 PBA Tour titles. He's at number eight right now, including two majors. Barnes, in his fifth Tournament of Champions Finals appearance, is seeking to win it for the second time, the conclusion of his semifinal versus Ryan Schaefer when we return. The H&R Block Tournament of Champions is brought to you by Atonic, the official footwear of the PBA. Atonic, first one there. By Motel 6, official lodging partner of the PBA. By H&R Block, when you got H&R Block, we welcome you back to Red Rock Lanes and those two gentlemen from Toledo, Ohio area, sitting in our Aaron's dream seats this week. What's missing from that picture? Uh, where do I begin? Popcorn machine. Right. Refrigerator. Refrigerator. And us. And us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> By the way, what, what color did you get your toenails painted when you were down at the spa? Well, you recommended pink because that's what you had earlier in the week. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Barnes up 20. Game's There's on. Schaefer in the sixth. Well, not a good sign for Ryan Schaefer when you leave the weekend. That, the difference is, watch the replay here. The six-pin ringing 10 goes up and around. Watch the six-pin second from the right. It's going to sit right there in the gutter. And what happens here, watch it. There it goes right there. That's because the ball's hitting weakly into the pocket. Not strong enough, not enough entry angle to get that six to hit that sideboard kickoff into the 10.
Our CLR clean sweep goes back to match number one, where Schaefer really put the pressure on Pete Weber. Yeah, this is his fill shot, and he knows if he strikes here, Weber has to double. And you see the way the six pin reacted there, Rob. Goes to the sidewalk, cuts to 10 and a half. That's always a good sign. Schaefer won that match 215 to 213 over the Hall of Famer. So Pete Weber, for the second consecutive week, loses on television. This lane is. I hear him mumbling right. about that lane. Can't get it too far. Yeah. Leaves the three pin. That's the first time he's done it this match. A lot of times what happens when you leave a week 10 is you try to give it a little extra on the next shot, and that's what happens. The ball goes high. Just three strikes in this semifinal so far for Schaefer. In his first match, he had seven. Little double dribble and a free throw from Ryan Schaefer. I mentioned to us yesterday he wants to come in here and, and, and have some fun, feel good, be loose, and, and enjoy his TV time. He certainly enjoyed his win versus Pete Weber. We saw him having some fun during commercial breakouts. A little more seriousness right now as he's in the hole, courtesy of Chris Barnes bowling. Gets back on the strike train. Had a ham bone sandwiched by Spares and now gets back with a strike here in the seventh. And the folks at home watching, they see Chris Barnes being a high rev guy and they're wondering, well, how can he throw the ball that straight? How can he keep it on line? Well, the trick is not to use a real aggressive bowling ball, but keep your fingers behind it, the bowling ball at release to get the ball to roll end over end and some pretty good ball speed. That'll hold, that'll hold the ball on its line and that'll enable you to play that down and in shot. Next week, we remain in Vegas, and we go team style on Super Bowl Sunday. Seems only appropriate. With the PBA exempt doubles classic coming your way live next Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. I tried to get you and I entered into the event, but they said, no way, buddy. How could that be? I have no idea. You didn't give them enough? Boy, look out. Hey. No, slammed and kicked that 10. Well, see, that was a little left of target. It holds its line. That's exactly what he's looking for. Two-bagger for Barnes. He can max out at 269, has a 31-pin lead right now. Schaefer back-to-back -back spares as he begins his eighth. Jeez. This one's getting away from him fast, Randy. After the first match against Pete Weber, the lanes are breaking down, the oil's going away, and that part of the lane is starting to become on fire. You can see how early this ball hooks. It never pushes to the right. He's already into the 23rd board, and that ball didn't push far enough to the right. Takes care of the four pin. Three consecutive spares now for Schaefer. Has just three strikes here in the semifinal. Uh. And maybe those flu like symptoms starting to take effect. Was able to fight through it in match number one, but the endurance certainly weakened. It's, it's been a long week, and, enough. and you keep in mind, we bowled 32 games in two days. I mean, my fingers looked like little burnt sausages after I got done. Ryan Schaefer going through the same kind of deal, and then you compound that with flu-like symptoms. He's running on empty right now. Four straight spares for Schaefer. 
And that may all but seal his fate. And it looks like the TV losing streak for Barnes is on the verge of coming to an end. One strike here, and Chris Barnes will advance to the title match. He's got a good look. He's throwing it really good right now. And he's got some pretty good pin carry. That could spell trouble for Michael Haugen Jr. Barnes 0-5 on television coming into today. And that will end as Barnes will move on to the Tournament of Champions title match, taking on Michael Haugen Jr. Pretty impressive performance for Chris Barnes. Let's see if he can ride that gravy train with biscuit wheels into the title match. Two ham bones in this match for Barnes. It's hard to pull off the double ham bone. Let me ask you a question. You bowled Friday night. How many ham bones did I get? Yes, that was a question. They were all out of them at the uh, concession stand. <laughs> Now, was that an experimental toss, or? Let's hope. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got a little momentum now. This will be Barnes' sixth top 10 finish. He was second last week in Fountain Valley, which was his best so far this season. He will finish no worse than second today. <laughs> yeah. Another great performance by Ryan Schaefer in a major. He's really turned it around after the first half of the season. Didn't bowl, bowl very well the first half, but he's really turned it around with two TV shows the second half of this season. Come on, Messenger. Short pin. <laughs> the Bulldog, boy, he was tenacious all Friday night. He just hung in there, kept winning matches, kept bowling the scores he needed to to get into the televised championship round today. Tough, tough competitor. Picks up the spare to Schaefer. Again, we mentioned three times a runner-up. h and Block do my taxes now. For and a major grand. twice at the Tournament of Champions in 2000 and 2002. He came in second. That's the way to conclude. The 257, the 205. The two seed, Chris Barnes, moves on. Up next, we get you set for our final. Haugen seeking his first major. Barnes, his third. We'll have it for you I'm when we it. return. I'm in the Ryan Troy. And we flash back to 1978, the Tournament of Champions, and the legend Earl Anthony in action. Take it on Tita Savez. Greatest left-hander in the history of bowling right there. So smooth. Boy, and he really loved winning the majors, especially Tournament of Champions and the National Championship. A lot of great names have won this title. Next week, we're back in Vegas, 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN for the PBA Exempt Doubles Classic. Who will win the $180,000 in prize money? For more information, log on to ESPN.com. For our next four Motel 6 text to vote questions, the PBA has placed the top 16 in points after the Dick Weber Open into four voting pots. Hang with me, this is a little bit confusing. All right, so this week's question is, which bowler on this list do you want to see competing in the role to riches? Text roll A for Walter A. Williams Jr., roll B for Pete Weber, roll C for Rhino Page, or roll D for Brad Angelo. The winner of that pod will advance to a final vote on February 24th, and you can text up to 10 times per day until Friday at 3 Eastern. You'll be charged 99 cents per text vote plus standard text messaging rates. Tune in February 10th to find out which player was selected. I know who I'm voting for.
Your name's not on that list. I wasn't going to vote for me. I sincerely doubt that. With the win, Haugen would jump into second in the Player of the Year. Points race ditto for Chris Barnes. Coverage of their title match when ESPN's live coverage of the 2008 H&R Block Tournament of Champions resumes. Are you ready? Welcome back to the first major held in Las Vegas since Mike Albee won the 79 National Championship at the Showboat Bowling Center. We are at Red Rocks Casino here in Vegas. Randy Peterson, Rob Stone with you on this Sunday as we get you set for our title match. The number one seed, Michael Haugen Jr. versus the two seed, Chris Barnes. Here's how they got there, courtesy of the Geico Championship Recap. Rob, match number one, Ryan Schaefer defeated Pete Weber by the score of 215 to 213. Weber needed a double, left the ring at 10, second ball in the 10. Lead this week either. All right, Ryan, good luck. Good luck. And in match number two, Chris Barnes defeated Ryan Schaefer by the score of 257 to 205. Barnes looking to win his second Tournament of Champions crown. A two hambone semifinal for Barnes in that victory. And now he takes on Michael Haugen Jr. And we talked about it earlier in the broadcast. Haugen Jr. didn't even think he was going to be bowling this week. Ended up going to the urgent care center here in Vegas. Swollen, sore throat. Tonsils were laying on his tongue, choking when he spoke. I'll tell you a little bit more about his visit and his communication with the nurses in a moment. But here's Chris Barnes to open up our title match. Gets the 10 to drop. Yeah, it had some insurance coming across. Head pin just went across and it was looking for the 10. The 10 was already gone. Nice opening shot. Let's see what type of nerves Michael Haugen Jr. has looking for his first ever career major. From Cave Creek, Arizona, just north of Phoenix, won Denny's PBA Tour title. Rob, prior to the interview, I, I asked Michael Haugen how his bar reaction looked yeah, because he was that, getting really. practice in between games, and he said, well, they're a little bit tighter than they have been all week, but if I keep my speed down a bit, they're still good. Wednesday, he went to the hospital, and as we said, he couldn't communicate, so he was writing notes and pointing to explain his ailment to the nurses, and the nurses would write back to him, and he's like, no, 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 I, I, I can hear you. I just, <laughs> I just can't speak right now, people. It's tight, now it's hooking. How's that laying tight now? It's hooking out of the building. See, and this is a problem that I thought Michael Haugen Jr. would run into. Chris Barnes is playing left of Michael Haugen. What happens is Chris will use all of get his that? hold area up. So when he misses to the left, yeah, Jones not here. his ball's not going to lay Thanks. off. <laughs> Just 20% on split conversions this week. Yeah, and this is not an easy one either. Almost impossible. 4-6-7. <laughs> well, when you're Chris Barnes uh, and you've got uh, you've got Mo on your side, that's exactly what you want to see. Well, let's see if Chris Barnes can keep it together mentally. Just continue to make great shots. This is fifth Tournament of Champions finals appearance. One win, one second place finish, and two third place finishes <laughs> for him. And as we take a look at our matchup, Haugen Jr. winning his first PBA Tour title this year. Came at the 2007 Lake County Indiana Classic where he beat Wes Malott in the final, 247 to 239. Chris Barnes, zero titles this season, but eight for his career, including two majors. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the bonus one. He's doing exactly what the greats before him would do in this situation. They get an opening from their opponent and they would take advantage of it. The greats like Earl Anthony, Mark Roth, Dick Weber. When they'd see an opening, they would need a stick to chew on. 
chomping at the bit to get up there and throw three or four in a row right on top of their opponent. Haugen has gone strike, open frame. Now this in the third. <sighs> Haugen is in serious trouble. He needs to make an adjustment, move a little bit to the left, and get on that same line that Chris Barnes is playing. You get the feeling he, he's lucky he was only the four standing. So if you're talking to Haugen right now, what are you advising him? I would watch where Chris Barnes' laydown area is, and I would get right on top of that, and then he would have that little bit of dry patch there, and he would have the hold left of that. He needs to mirror where Chris Barnes is playing and adjust his speed accordingly. And Chris isn't hooking it a lot. Even though he's a high rep guy, he's not crossing a lot of boards. It's a line that Michael Haugen Jr. can play. The problem is he's been playing out the whole week. Feels comfortable out there. Hooks really out in trouble. There we go. But he's still talking to himself. Certainly does not feel comfortable as he's in an early 32 pin hold here in the finals of the HR Block Tournament of Champions. When we return, our live conclusion of this season's second PBA major. Welcome back to Red Rock. Resort and lanes here in Las Vegas for the conclusion of the 2008 H&R Block Tournament of Champions. There's Ken Treat, the H&R Block Senior Vice President of Field Management. H&R Block, the title sponsor of this week's tournament. PBA.com is your best source for all the latest PBA news, including information about PBA Experience Bowling Leagues, the leagues which are a joint venture between the PBA and USBC, gives league bowlers the chance to bowl on the same oil patterns that the pros compete on each week. Leagues are constantly forming, so head to PBA.com today to learn more. Chris Barnes bowled two hand bones in the semifinals of his 257-205 win. He is on the verge of opening up this title match with the hand bone. Four strikes in a row, already on top by 32. And for those of you that are new to our sport, a hand bone is a four bagger. A little bit light. Watch this shot here. Chris may be just a little over pumped, a little bit too much ball speed. This ball doesn't hook quite enough but only leaves the two-pin easy single-pin spare for Barnes. He's been flawless in single-pin spares this week. So strike, 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 spare for Barnes. Lead at 31. Barnes with the third best average on the tour this season behind Walter Ray Williams Jr. and the rookie Rhino Page checking in at just over 226 per outing. That's better. There we go. Oh, like that. Chris Barnes looking to add his name to the list of winners here in Las Vegas, like Mike Albee, Nelson Burton Jr., Marshall Holman, Don Johnson, Mark Roth, Carmen Salvino, Wayne Webb, Dick Weber. They all won titles here. Chris Barnes looking to add his name to that list and do it in major fashion. Michael Haugen Jr. working off a strike. He really struggled in frames two and three. It's gonna hook early two, you got it. And now in five as well. Get out of the blue, all week it doesn't hook now, it's okay. God, you kidding me. If I move in, it doesn't get back. It's not good. There's good talk and there's bad talk. Yeah, and this isn't good. You know, again, Michael Haugen played where he's playing all week long, and he's comfortable there. And right now, his same ball reaction that he had all week long that helped him lead this tournament is gone. It happens quite often on television. You've got to find another way to get around it. Come on, get a little hook. Coming into today, Haugen was unbeaten on television this season, 2-0. He won both of those at the Lake County Indiana Classic. This will be his fourth top 10 finish of the season. Three rack. 
And he asked for a re-rack as he needs to, he needs some more time to get himself composed and figure this, this lane out. Our Flomax weekly update focuses in on Michael Haugen Jr. 45th last week in Fountain Valley, qualified 8th and tore it up in match play. Michael Haugen is going to make a ball change here, and if he's going to stay where he's playing the lanes now, he needs to amp up his ball speed so that the ball will hold line. This time it's the Ball seven pin. gone on Sunday. <laughs> wow. Well, we've all been there. Any of us that have ever bowled on television have all experienced what Michael Haugen's going through, and it's the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> if you're Chris That's Barnes, it's going to be pretty excited about the situation you're in right now knowing that your opponent is struggling to get to the pocket and you are absolutely locked in zeroed in well, you know you know all you have to do is just pry it off your hand and get it going in the right direction and it's going to hit the pocket can't get too comfortable though got to keep that foot on their throat absolutely there it is you can see it the intensity in Chris Barnes' face. As my buddy PBA champion Justin Romick would say, he's fixing to put boots to him. Got that four, four pin to kick out there at the end. And it's easy to tell how Barnes feels about his bowling. His face tells it all. He wanted to celebrate that one, didn't he? Oh, yeah. He? The atomic ring in 10. That six pin went around the 10 so fast, I didn't even see it. Now, you're talking about everybody on the tour has had these kind of days on television, and we witnessed Barnes have one this year. I think it was in Chicago at the CLR Windy City Classic. Just a nightmare day for him. Yeah, it was a freak show. The match that he bowled with Brad Angelo. I think I think uh, Brad won that match 160 to 150, but it, it happens to everybody sooner or later. Michael Haugen Jr., the best he can shoot is 216, and that's if he strikes out, and he's only got two strikes in the match and is yet to double. And that's kind of what it looked like all week for him. He played that extreme outside line. He threw the pins around. He had the nice angle. And he pretty much had it all to himself. Even Walter Ray, who's, you know, he's made a living playing that same exact line, didn't get it done from out there. Michael Haugen was the only one that, fu that found a home playing the extreme outside part of the lane. His third strike of this title match, but he's yet to pair any of them up, seeking his first double. Get a little hook. Get a little hook. And he finds right. it. Still making show off a little bit, at least. Still a ways to go. Michael Haugen Jr. finally found a home. Catching a strike on both lanes. Can still strike out for 216. Chris Barnes, if he goes strike spare the rest of the match, will shoot 228. Anything can happen. Right now is the time for Chris Barnes to step up and take this championship. Careful. Put the nine pin up, and all of a sudden, we've got a different match. And again, Chris knows that if he just fills frames, meeting any kind of a mark, eighth, ninth, and tenth frame, that Michael Halgan Jr. can't beat him. First time he's left the four pin standing. And quickly deposits that. I'm good one there. Set it up. Multiple Tournament of Champion titles gone to the following men, and Mr. Barnes on the verge of adding his name to that list. 
who won the 2006 Tournament of Champions. Jason Couch, the only player to ever do it three consecutive years in a row. It's okay. It's all right. As long as you convert the spare, he needs a mark in the 10th frame, and he's, he's a winner. Second time in the last three frames, he's left the 10. Saw Mike Durbin also on that list. You know that Mike Durbin won titles out here on the PBA Tour using three, four, and a five-step approach. Oh, my God. Oh. There we go. All of a sudden now, we've got a different match. That's exactly what Michael Haugen Jr. needed. He strikes out. He shoots 216. That would force Chris Barnes to double in the 10th frame. This match, not over. And Haugen may have finally found his game. His first pair of strikes. Careless, careless mistake. It's just... It's just unthinkable that Chris Barnes at this stage in the match would miss a 10-pin. His first single pin miss all week. Here's Haugen. Strikes in the 7th and the 8th. Looking for a three-bagger. Looking to claw his way back into this title match. Come on, baby. Come on. Yeah, He's come alive. On now. He alive, alive and well. You're right. It's game on now. Using two different bowling balls now. On, is he here. confident enough on this left lane with the ball change that he made to throw three more right now? How quickly momentum can change. It went from 41 pins to just 19 in two shots. Come on. Cam Vaughn when he needed it the most. Biggest tournament of his career when it looked like he had absolutely no opening and right now is on the verge of stealing this match one, and the championship away from Chris Barnes. It's going to take a re-rack, take all the time that he needs to gather himself the biggest shot of his career. Now, if you're Chris Barnes, what do you need to be focusing on right now? I mean, look at his face. Look how dejected he looks. How does he rebound from such a huge mistake when he whiffs the 10 pin? Will he have enough Maple Moxie to get up in the 10th frame and double? Remember, Michael Haugen Jr. cannot shut out Chris Barnes. Now, speaking of Moxie, it's been... Haugen Jr. with nothing but Moxie. Four consecutive strikes, looking for five in a row right now here in the 10th. Oh, oh, oh. He did it! He forced Chris Barnes to show up and double in the 10th frame. Unbelievable turn of events. I mean, after the fifth frame, Haugen was ready to leave the establishment. It was his second open frame of the match. He was stuck at 76 after five. Down and by then it jumped to 96, to 126, to 156, to 186. He was down by 53 pins. But it's not over for Barnes yet. Nope. And this is a big shot right here. Come on. That's okay. Oh. That's okay. Huge. Now, we have a possibility of a tie. Chris Barnes fills 20 pins in the 10th frame. We will tie at 215. If he goes strike, spare, or spare, strike, we have a tie. Two strikes wow. in the 10th frame. Chris Barnes is a winner. I did what I could, Eric. I hope it's enough. How will Barnes react to this pressure? He got off the TV losing streak in the semifinals. Hot start here in the finals with three consecutive strikes, but now he must react to missing the 10 pin in the ninth to leave an open frame, his first of the tournament. Not to be. Remember the last time on the right lane, he left the four pin. He went a little high. Chris's M.O. is when he needs one, he gets a little amped up and he overthrows it, and that's what happened on that shot. Right now, he's in a critical zone where a little too soft or a little too far to the right, it goes high. That ball looked pretty good, maybe just a, just a shade fast. Comes in light, leaves a two pin. Needs to convert here and must strike on his fill shot.
Has to have all 10, Rob. So a strike will tie him at 2.15. Tournament of Champions is brought to you by Aaron's. Nobody beats Aaron's. Nobody. By CLR. All kinds of dirty, one kind of clean. Vegas knows all about excitement, and we just had it here at the Red Rock Casinos. Michael Haugen Jr. coming from way back to defeat Chris Barnes. We take a look at our CLR clean sweep. This is Barnes needing a strike in the tent to force a roll off. And it's the four pin that denies him. Drops to the floor, Haugen celebrates, and now he gets to celebrate with Randy Peterson. Randy? Thanks, Rob. Michael Haugen Jr., just when it looked like you were left for dead, you come back with an amazing five-bagger to end the match. What was going through your mind when Chris Barnes missed that 10-pin? Second life. This is a one-time shot, your first time. Just make the best shot and make him have to strike to beat you in. Congratulations, Michael Haugen. You, back to you, Rob. With that victory, Haugen moves into second place in the Denny's Player of the Year points race four behind Walter Ray Williams Jr. Make sure to join us again next Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, special time here on ESPN for the PBA exempt doubles classic coming your way from right here, the Red Rock Casino in Thriller from Vegas. Michael Haugen Jr. claims his first 